Unsurprisingly, you can see we're around 10 frames per second and we have over 30,000 batches. So this is where animation instancing comes in. For convenience, I'm going to create an empty game object and use it to group together all but one of our zombies. This is so I can easily disable them to work on applying animation instancing to a single zombie before applying it to the rest. Animation instancing works with shaders and the asset comes with a few animation instancing enabled shaders itself. You can of course modify your own shaders to work with animation instancing using instructions from their blog entry, which I'll link in the description, but we'll leave that for another video. For now, let's set all of our zombie materials to use the provided animation instancing shader. You'll notice that the zombie is now invisible, but that is expected behavior at this point. As well as the shader, animation instancing needs two more parts to work. First is the animation instancing manager, which needs to be in the scene, which will add to the directional light because it already exists. Next, we need to add the animation instancing script component to the model we want to use. It's best to add this to the game object which is hosting the animator component. At this point, you may want to apply the changes to your prefab. Moving on, let's navigate to the animation generator using the animation instancing menu item and then drag in your zombie asset. Make sure to adjust the frame rate to whatever you're targeting and make sure there's a tick next to the animation you plan to use. In this case, it's called Walk in Place. Now, let's click Generate and wait patiently whilst the script generates what it refers to as animation textures. Once it's done, you should see a new folder named Animation Textures in the root of your asset folder. If you look inside, you should see an animation texture named after your game object. You may need to refresh the folder before it's listed. Now, the next step described in the instructions doesn't always work for me, and I'll show you the error. The instructions suggest that we select Build Asset Bundle by navigating through Custom Editor and Asset Bundle. However, you can see that this has given us an error in this instance. My preferred way of doing this, which works for multiple platforms, is to use the Asset Bundle Browser Package. Let's install it by navigating through Window, Package Manager, selecting All, scrolling down to Asset Bundle Browser and selecting Install. Then we navigate through Window to select Asset Bundle Browser and we can dock this window wherever we like. In the Configure tab, you can see our animation texture is listed and if we switch to Build, we can build the Asset Bundle for our target platform making sure to check the box for copying to streaming assets. If we look back at our zombie model, we can see the prototype field is empty in the animation instancing component. Let's make sure we set the prototype as the zombie game object before moving on and applying all the changes to our prefab one last time. By clicking run, we can see that everything is working for our single zombie. So now let's select all the other zombies and assign the zombie prototype to all of their animation instancing components. And let's enable the parent game object so that they're all enabled. If we click run again, we can now see that all of our zombies are working using the animation instancing. When looking at the stats panel, you can see the frame rate is acceptable and the amount we're saving through batching. That's all for this video on animation instancing.